Well, I'm getting out my Halloween decorations. That can only mean it's almost time for some trick-or-treaters to show up at my door. And this year, of course, things are gonna be a little bit different. Just as everything has been thrown for a loop in 2020, trick-or-treating, of course, is going to be affected. Now, Halloween is my very favorite holiday. I love having trick-or-treaters come to the house. I love being able to hang out with my neighbors in the driveway and see how things have been going for them, catch up a little bit. But this year, we're all concerned about giving or getting the virus, and I certainly don't want to get anybody sick, and I certainly don't want to get sick myself. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to build a candy distribution system that will allow me to stay at least six feet away from all of the trick-or-treaters and to still be able to hand out some candy in a way that is safe for everybody. Now, any video that's produced in 2020 that talks about interacting with people in public needs to come with a big fat disclaimer, and here's mine. If you've been exposed to this virus, or you're concerned that you may have been exposed to it, or you're showing any of the symptoms of, that come with this virus, please sit this year out. It's just not worth spreading this virus either to yourself or to anybody else, just to give out some candy. But if you're perfectly healthy, and if you think that you'd like to still participate in a safe way, then perhaps these instructions I'm gonna give will be one way that you could do it. All right, now let's get started. Now my first inclination for how to get candy from me to a trick-or-treater while still staying at least six feet apart involved an inclined plane, you know, kind of a slide that I could put the candy up here and it would slide down into their bucket down at the bottom. And I first thought I would just do this with like a piece of plywood or a piece of melamine, but I thought maybe that would be a little tricky to make sure it slid straight down. So as I was walking through the hardware store, I saw this kind of pipe that I could use and I thought this would make a really nice shoot for delivering candy. And my idea here is to set it up at a high enough angle that I'll be able to make sure candy slides down it without any problem, but make sure that that keeps me far enough away that I stay at least six feet away from the kids. So first we'll try it about 22 degrees. Here's a piece of candy. And that does slide down, but it takes a long time. Let's try some other shapes. We'll try this one. That one also worked, but also took a long time. Let's try a little heavier one. That one never quite came out the bottom. And let's try something really small, like a little Hershey Kiss. These are taking a long time, but I'm well more than the six feet away. This is a 10 foot long piece of pipe, so I can easily increase this angle a lot until I get these to slide quickly. So here I raised it to about 30 degrees. We'll try those same pieces of candy again. That comes down and shoots out with a little bit more force. All right, so I know that the angle needs to be 30 degrees and that'll be steep enough that that candy is gonna go shooting down this pipe into the waiting bucket or bag of a trick-or-treater. Now that I know that there's a 30 degree angle here and I also know that the distance from here to where the trick-or-treater is gonna stand needs to be at least 72 inches or six feet, then I can use the simple math for a 30, 60, 90 triangle to determine the length of this hypotenuse. And in this case, it needs to be 83.1 inches. Now, I'm gonna cut it a little bit longer than that just to make sure I've got a little bit of leeway in case I need to, but for all you kids out there who are saying to your parents when you're doing your math homework, when am I ever gonna to need to know how to do this? The answer is when you're building contraptions to give out candy for Halloween. Not the straightest cut ever, but it'll work. So I took this idea of how to do this 30, 60, 90 triangle into my super complicated CAD program known as a piece of paper with a pencil. And I sketched up a couple of different things. This is kind of a side view. So I'm gonna put some vertical supports in the back and one in the front. I'm gonna set the whole thing on a little tabletop that I can roll out into the front of my house. And I'll be able to stand back at this area and deliver the candy down the chute to trick-or-treaters that are down here. And lest you should think that's just gonna fall over, I uh, did a second design in my CAD program. This is a rear view shot to show that those supports are actually gonna come out at an angle to give this thing a little bit of stability so it'll just be able to support itself without falling over. All right, let's build it. 
Now, I didn't really have a plan going into this. I was basically winging it and making it up as I went. And if I was to build this again, I would probably do it a little differently. Rather than having the supports come right up to the pipe, I would probably build a little cross member and let the pipe sit into it. Then I wouldn't have to use the sander like this to cut a bevel into the end of it. In fact, that was a mistake I made. You'll see more in just a minute about why. So we've cut out our two long legs and to determine exactly how we want to do the cross braces to set them at exactly the right distance apart, I lined up the bottom edges of these with the edge of the table here so that we could then grab the section of pipe that we cut off earlier and fit it into that little top corner there to see how well these legs are gonna fit. And that's a pretty good fit. We'll do a few more quick adjustments and then we'll put in the cross pieces. So as I'm putting these cross members on, let me explain what I forgot when I was putting that bevel in with the sander. This pipe is gonna come down at a 30 degree angle, but I cut those bevels in assuming the pipe was gonna come out straight. I just completely forgot when I was doing it. And here's when I realized that. Oh, well, you know, I didn't take into account the fact we're gonna to need to have this angled. That's okay. We'll get it pretty close and I can do the angling on the sander. So I did go back off camera and fix those bevels and then finished the assembly of the rest of this frame. Now I'm building a fairly complicated frame here. You could really do the same thing by just balancing this pipe over a tall table and a short table with maybe some duct tape to hold it in place. I just built this frame because I wanted to. I finished it off by using some screws to hold the pipe to the frame itself and then it was ready to test. Now, just in case you're concerned about me actually handling the candy with my fingers, I was planning to wear gloves, but I've also got this little bad boy. We'll see if we can use this to drop some candy in the chute. Here we go. Oh! It's because this is made of plastic. In and out. Try one more. Here we go. Nice. <laughs> okay, so let's try all the different candy types here. We've got a Butterfinger. Beautiful. How about a Snickers peanut butter? Oh yeah. How about a Twix? That's gonna work. And a Kit Kat. Very good. And we've got a Reese's or a uh, Hershey's Kiss. Excellent. What else have we got in here? Here's a bag of M&Ms. Perfect. And a Kit Kat if we didn't already do one of those. Looks like they all work. Awesome. All right, and the basic assembly is finished. I'm planning to do a little decoration on this and gussy it up just a little bit, but I wanted to do one last thing and that is measure how far I am standing from a trick-or-treater. So here we go. Go ahead and take this measurement. From me to there is about seven feet. So we're definitely gonna maintain our six foot of social distancing when the trick-or-treaters come. And I'll be able to give them candy without actually touching the candy myself using this little gripper and it should be a real happy Halloween. As you watch me finish up these decorations, let me reiterate, I'll be taking lots of precautions this year. I'll be wearing some gloves and a mask. I'm planning to get a full hazmat suit to wear as a costume. I'll be disinfecting the end of the shoot where the kids receive the candy periodically throughout the evening. Now I'm doing all of this because I love this holiday and I wanna help the kids who choose to come trick-or-treating at my house this year to do so safely. So with a few finishing touches, including a little stand here sign that we're all so familiar with by now, I'll put that on the ground near the end of the chute. This thing is finished. All right, with that, this project is finished. Hey, I sure enjoyed building this. I look forward to having the trick-or-treaters come on Halloween and keeping them a safe distance away so we can enjoy the holiday. Hey, if you've learned a little something or enjoyed this video, you can let me know by hitting a thumbs up down below. And if you've got some feedback how I could have done this better, I'd love to hear about that down in the comments. If you'd like to see more content like this, of course, you can think about subscribing, but there's no pressure there at all. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Now. This candy, I've had my hands all over it. I guess that means I better go eat it all. I better get busy. Happy Halloween, everyone. Top down to the bottom to about 83 or so inches long. There's a lot of cars driving past and it's driving me nuts. All right, so having decided that a 30 degree incline is plenty steep enough to get the candy to slide down without any trouble, that lets me know that this is going to be winding up needing...
Hmm. At a 30 degree angle is steep enough that the candy will get down this pipe with no problem at all. That tells me that I need, man. All right, so having decided that a 30, my goodness, I'll get this, I promise. Okay, we're gonna start again. I don't know how many times I'm gonna do this intro, but maybe eventually we'll get it right.